came into machine quilting a little bit later in my life because I worked all my life and I was in my 50s and I bought a gamble. I did research, I went to the first um, MQS to okay. try to research machines because back then there weren't. It was really hard to get a chance to look at more than one machine. How did you do that, you know? So MQS was an opportunity. And I heard that you and Mildred were there later, but I didn't... How did you hear about us? I heard that you were there, but I couldn't even... I couldn't think far enough to think about anything computerized, you know, oh, at that time. Okay. I was okay. just looking at the gamble machines because I was nervous that I was going to spend maybe $3,000, which sounded like an enormous amount of money, you know, and I wanted to, I, I just couldn't go any further than that. I knew you were there, but I didn't talk to you. I saw you in the booth, your little booth, okay. and I bought a gamble, best thing I ever did. I believe as the years went by, I became a gamble rep and I uh, worked for a rep and did a lot of demos and went to a lot of shows and the years only convinced me more that what I did was the right thing. But the chain, I built a big quilting business right away. I got in at the right time and there weren't a lot of machine and quilters in my area it, yeah. and I worked real hard at getting good at it. You know? right. So I, I, it meant everything, I was very serious about my business. And what was happening, like I said, I was a little older when I started, physically, the physical part of the quilting was getting, it was really, it was hurting me. I, because what you're doing is you're not really walking, you're doing little moves back and forth. And mm -hmm. in the evening, I could hardly stand up straight sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but, I, and I didn't know what I was gonna do about that. I wasn't gonna quit quilting. But one day I went into a quilt shop, our quilt shop, the little local quilt shop, and there was a quilt hanging there. And I, and I said to the owner, who did that? And she said, oh, it's a new quilter, and I think she's computerized. And I said, whatever she did, I'm doing. And I got her name, and it was Tanya. Tanya. It was Tanya, oh. and Tanya's name then was Tanya Del Tagno Armanasco. Nobody, right. so everybody called her Tanya DTA. That's right. And so Tanya, I, I met with Tanya. We just hit it off. I mean, oh, I was old enough to be her mother, certainly her mother, but we were just. Just everything we did creatively and everything about the Statler, Absolutely. we did together. She was the sharpest, fastest mind. I know you knew her and loved her oh, like I did. Oh, absolutely. Really, um, you know, kind of a pioneer in pattern design. And, and yes, you showed her yes. once and she knew it. And it. we did a lot of auto sketch classes with oh, you. Yes, and she yes, actually yes. learned something while I <laughs> was not <laughs> as fast as her. I took your classes over and over. But it changed my life. I went on to, I had a successful business then before the Statler, yes. but once I mastered the Statler, I didn't have the physical problems that I had anymore. I bought two of them. I ran and two I Statlers. That yeah, you ran I ran two Statlers for years. I had a really built a really successful business, Wonderful. and you know, won a lot of awards. Got to teach, got to travel with Gamel. That, but I mean, the Statler that yes. I always taught Statler. That's all I taught. I didn't teach mm -hmm. before then. I, I know people all over this country because of Statler. And, you know, I'm associated with that. Mm -hmm. it, I never get tired of quilting. And if I had physically been doing it, I just don't know what I'd be doing now. I can't really tell. But it's not just the physical part. It's the perfection that I wanted in quilting I could never achieve. That's why when I saw that quilt hanging in that shop, and all it was, by what we do now, it was just a primitive thing almost. I mean, it was a basic, it was a beacon. Mm -hmm. It was a little flower, a single little flower she had put in all the blocks. And but when perfect. I, looked, they were perfect. And I knew, I said, that's what I'm, that's how I'm gonna quilt. Whatever she did, I'm doing. And it was just the best thing. I mean, I, I, I just had so many experiences. My husband says, I want a job where people say they love you because what, uh, whenever you do something for them, because that's what happens. Yes, you do yes, a perfect, yes. beautiful quilt, and they love you. Yes, and, yes. And 
he's never going to get that job. So, but I have it, you know, even yes. to this day. Yes. You know, people, uh, they love you for the good work mm -hmm. that you do. And yes. I couldn't do it without the Sabbath. I love it. I'll never, uh, I could never tell you how grateful I am for the path that it led me in this life. And I intend, I told Tom he can just bungee cord me to the belly bar when I can't stand up anymore. <laughs> and I am going to keep quilting. I mean, and you know something, Paul, I believe that what we do is not in quilting is so much more than just, we're not just quilting. What we make is very meaningful yes. to people. It's yes. part of their family, it's part of their lives, and we're like a little cog in that wheel. We don't make the quilts, but we finish them and enable them to, yes, it to become part of their history. Yes. So yes. it's important what we yes. do, too. Yes. And I mean, I have a lot of respect for it, so mm -hmm. I love what I do, and thank you, thank well, you. Yeah. Well, I have thank a couple you. more questions. Okay. <laughs> Think, think about what is what a quilt that really stands out to you, a quilt that you quilted or made that just stands out. Would you want to share about that? You know, I've never been a piecer, so I, the quilts that I the quilts that I love and that I've done have been whole cloths because I, I'm not a piecer yes. and. It, to me, it's not the same. I can give it to somebody and ask them to piece it to, you know, for mm -hmm. me, but it's not the same. What I do, try to do for all my family and the babies that are born into the family is do a whole cloth. Mm -hmm. yes. And because I think that's really meaningful. I'm the same way. I do yeah. a lot of whole cloth. Yeah, really yeah. Good. Yeah, and because that really is me, where if I, like I said, I don't really have time and I'm never, I've never become the as good a piecer as I am a quilter with some of that. So, but I love whole cloths. And our, what we can do now with the Stabler and a whole cloth is mine. Oh, it is. I mean, oh. I, I keep saying I'm going to do them for shows, but I, I don't. I do them for my family. So, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. One thing that I forgot to say is about the wonderful Mildred, who I love. I love her. And what I would do with Mildred over the years. I, I was always surprised. I taught classes at the MQS and at all the sure. different shows. Yes. And I taught, mostly the classes that I taught were like uh, apparel, jackets, and mm -hmm. things like that that mm -hmm. I made on the Statler. Mm -hmm. And I always, I would grab Miller the minute I got to the show and I'd say, would you model for me? I and that. she would always, always, without question, model. So I mean, she didn't care. She didn't care what it was. She was so sweet. And one year, and for the jackets, I made this jacket out of uh, drapery fabric. And I ran a curtain rod through the shoulders, you know. Do you remember like uh, Scarlett O'Hara? Yes, yes. You know, yes. when she wore the drapes. Uh -huh. And Mildred came in modeling the drapes with the curtain rod on her shoulders. I think we have a picture of that somewhere. Uh -oh. That was so funny. Everybody thought it was hysterical. And if you have a picture. You I'm sure we that. do. She'll remember oh, that, course. but we did a curtain rod oh, yeah. out of her shoulders, she and she, it was really cute. But she, oh gosh, she was always such a good sport. And one year I did a tree, big tree skirt, you know, and we were showing this tree skirts, and I had her wear them as a skirt. She never blinked an eye. She just did it, and she'd walk right through there. So that is my Mildred story, and the best, you married a good sport. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. That's it.